You know, one feature in Dragon Age 4 made me realise that despite everything, Bioware still has the heart and soul that we thought it had lost. If you played any Bioware game, whether it's a certain moment or a certain feature, we will find that one definitive thing that defines our Bioware experience. From the epic scale of the Battle of Ostagar in Dragon Age Origins to the gripping Mass Effect 2 suicide mission. Or maybe you just really love to stick it to the Star Child in the end of Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 is better than any Dragon Age game and even Mass Effect 1 to a degree because of one iconic feature. And it's finally coming to Dragon Age. So in an article featured in Edge magazine, written by Jeremy Peel, Peel covers the Bioware player data. Now most players have a set group or a set squad that they keep to for an entire playthrough. But actually, that won't be possible in Veilguard. Corin Bush, one of the game directors for Dragon Age Veilguard, had this to say. Sometimes certain companions will be mandatory because others might not always be available. The article also covers how this game doesn't confine companions to just one base. And no, I'm not talking about Inquisition where you change from Haven to Skyhold. But the lighthouse as we know it to be the base in Dragon Age Veilguard will be the base, but companions will also have their own business to take care of when they're not around. Now let's compare this to Mass Effect 3 for a second. Between missions, Liara in one case goes down to engineering to argue with Javik and Garrus takes a break from calibrations to go to the memorial wall to remember Ashley who, to be fair, I think most of us sacrificed. Bush does give an example though of how it's used in Veilguard, wherein Nev shows up in Docktown in Minrathus. She's investigating an abduction. If I go and interact with her, I can actually stop what I'm doing, pick up her arc, and adventure with her through her part of the story, in Bush's words. Now you don't necessarily have to do these missions, they are optional, but it will be interesting to find out if there are consequences for that. But it's because they are optional quests that resolve themselves, Bush hesitates to call them side quests, which is quite exciting to me because it sounds like they're trying something new. One final quote I do want to address, which pretty much sums up what Bioware has been shooting for since the trailer released. When talking consistency throughout all the Dragon Age games, director John Epler conveys that Dragon Age is always an RPG. It's always about the characters. Now many, including myself, I won't lie, had mixed feelings about the trailer. But when I really thought about it, it created that kind of... we're putting together a team vibe that you kind of get from like Suicide Squad, for example. Like it's not trying to take itself too seriously in a good way. Because it's based in, or it starts in, this bar where Varric is talking to Harding about these characters. And we all know how much Farrakh loves to exaggerate his stories and his characters. My point is, this new perspective, the gameplay reveal, and now reading this article, to be honest, I'm actually quite excited now. Now it's, I know it's an understatement to say Bioware's had some rough patches, but at least in some respects, I will say that I think Bioware's learned some of its lessons. Let us know your thoughts though. Personally, here on the channel, we just kind of hope that this game reaches as many people as possible, because the marketing campaign has been a bit rocky, especially with the sad news about Game Informer. But if you want to hear more on that, you're going to have to check out the video that's on screen now. Don't forget to hit that like button, please do hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time, Warden Commander. <laughs>